Hey, what's going on, Periscope? Bomb Squad, good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Now, I got to tell you, when I was logging on, I was having some difficulty. Uh, it should be on auto, but... Okay, so... On the broadcast is come. My name is Keith B. Dick. It's official, you guys. You are in the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. This is the Bomb Squad community. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook. All you got to do is use the hashtag search. Hashtag search, you guys. With bomb, the word, the words, Bomb Squad, in a group search. Do a request to join. We are really going to look through your profile to make sure that you are a really good fit for the community. So, uh, the Bomb Squad, we're going to, this year, you guys, we're going to deliver some great benefits and we're going to challenge you as photographers. So get ready. If you are up for a challenge and you want to see if you can make it as a photographer uh, in a structured kind of way, not in a hobbyist kind of way, not in a casual kind of way, but in a professional kind of way, if that's what you're looking for, I'm going to tell you this is a great group for you guys. Can you hear me okay? Is the audio working out really well? Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know. Let me know if you can hear the audio. Don't stop it. Just put in a Wi-Fi for me. By the way, I'm doing a dual broadcast on YouTube and Periscope, you guys. This is the 7705 Pacific Standard Time broadcast. Thank you. And tonight we're going to talk about composition. I'm going to take you to a website, a website that I'm going to say that I trust in terms of information. And it's right in line with what I typically like to teach as a photographer. And we're going to talk about the importance of that. Because composition, let's say your exposure is just slightly off. If your composition is spot on, it's going to create a great image for you. All right. So, um, you guys, we I definitely like to talk about in, in uh, what I am back to back. What you got to do is go to workshops.keithbdixon.live. Beware of upcoming mac os transition issues and here's the thing that i want to say i'm not going to go into this because this is pretty technical but um here's what i want to say usually when mac comes out with a release i wait i don't upgrade especially as a print on site guy um i don't want to mess up my my drivers and you know all my setups so i usually wait on most install come out don't install go into it i guess we kind of expect platforms update sometimes the bummer and then as really came here now um the if i'm using a web and just kind of what help me should i waste my time reading that process all the overall net that i'm about to we refer to a, a principle interesting people you know, oh my bad see uh there's patterns here i'm sitting here now i'm in the third or i can do it on this side this was just flat then this way, if it is, I want you to go three. I want to share something every now. I'm Walter Sims, and this I, mean, I like to call this is my verse. And watch the community, you bomb squad, and each of these photos, and we'll look at it and be like, like that's cool. Because I think this is a okay. I got no. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with the power over here. I'm just having some some deadly internet connectivity issues, you guys. Let's try this again here. Okay, um, I am not sure what's going on here. I know, right? I told Sean I'd give him his phone back tomorrow, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure, you guys. I have no internet. Let me try. Let me just try another Wi-Fi connection that I have in here. Okay, give me a quick second. I just I have two Wi-Fi's on the on the router. Something's going on with the internet. It's very intermittent. I know, right? So, anyhow, the show must go on. Okay, you guys. 
here's what we're going to do. So I don't know what's going on with the internet, but here's what I, here's the point I want to make. If you go into the bomb squad community, all you can out there and you start work revenueing, uh, you're going to basically keyword doing that because they, they just uh, make a cool on. And it's also not good when you're blocked. So that's hurting you guys doing this. Okay. I, but nothing else is working. Okay. So look, um, I'm going to wrap with that because everything that I need to show you is actually online. So, um, unfortunately, guys, nothing is working here. And I, it looks like I'm going to have to reset my whole router. And um, all right. So take a look at that website. Houston, we, ha we have a major problem. Take a look at that website that I, that I put up, you guys. And um, let me see if I can get it on here. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe we can we can hustle this out. Okay, watch this. I think I got something here, you guys. We're gonna do this. Hold on. Okay, so I, I have the page cat. Back of the shoes are and they slightly go. Achieve that apertures one for position themselves that putting in a lot of light. So if you uh, are defined, so that in mind. Now in a driving for uh, check to the client, but you know, and it looks. It may have been a zoomed in on it, but lines are type of shutters. Tell me what type. Let's let's play this photograph. If you agree with slow, slow. If you had this, what would you, what fractional number? If, for example, is it six seconds? Your speed was. Would you guys agree with that? People would agree with me, and say Keith, you're right. He could photograph that way. And created at eight all the way to it work. Pretty tricky, huh? So that's the deal with this. Now, um, it depends on the light that's in the scene, um, because when you're they're gonna bump up their ISO to like 1200, 1250. Anytime you bump up your ISO in a in a super dark place, the only thing you do is increase what's called the noise signal in the image. You're increasing the noise signal in the image. It's a lot different than film. Because in film, you bought it for faster speed or slower speed. In digital, and this was my problem with when digital came in, I was like, how do they replicate film speed? Like, it just doesn't sound right. How do you have a digital ISO? The thought behind it was, we'll just increase the noise signal because that's what it's doing. How could he have triggered some off-camera flash? Okay, that's a good question. Now, um, there's a... There's a concept called painting with light, and I talked about that earlier today. If you were on Facebook, I took a loom cube and, f and did some fill. Now, you guys are familiar with loom cube, and um, if, you are, if you're at exposure, I think Lamar might, maybe Lamar has a brochure there. Put a code in if you're interested in buying a loom cube. Use that code to save you some change. Now, here's the deal. You see that pillar right there? If you wanted to be really cool and slick, um, this is also pretty dangerous because it looks like that's an active railroad track. Um, what I would do is I'd get some pocket wizards and um, I would keep this camera position. I would take a strobe and place it behind the pillar and use some type of light modifier to shape the light directly upwards onto the bridge because that's probably going to be the darkest area and where the least amount of light is. So I don't have to use a super slow shutter speed. I can use a decent shutter speed somewhere around uh, a sixth of a second or, or a third of a second, somewhere around there. So that's what I would do. So I'd have this light shooting up to the top and then I may put a light... Um, you see those bushes in the left corner in the back? I might put a light there as well to light those bushes up. So that's what I would do, you know, so that I could not only have a compositional value with the tracks and the lines, but as you come back towards the camera position, you're entertained by the light. That's how I literally think about my images. I want to use light. And anytime that I make a, an image, whether it's for whatever I'm doing, editorial, I use light in a way to attract attention to things and to guide people's eyesight. And if you start thinking about your imagery that way, you'll start to create better portraits and, and better landscape images and just better everything. So where do you want people to go 
light is like a marker that steers people through your images. Is this making sense for you guys? I want you to put in, uh, let's go um, 6.7, 6.7, you guys. And that was the last one. So I thought this was a really good example that was definitely in line with what I like to do as a photographer and pretty accurate. How do how do the lights how do lights attract okay I missed that one you guys my bad try to try to run that back for me if you can let me see uh if you could run that comment back I totally missed it it was going by pretty quick on my end at least try to got to try light painting oh it's Steve it's addictive <laughs> it really is it is a total addiction. It'll take you down a whole nother path because um, it's, it, it just I don't know, it's, it's, it's different, especially with the loom cube because the light is constant and it's strong. And the one thing that I'm really excited about is Lighthouse. Someone had asked a question and I totally missed it. So can we... Can we do that when you come back? Yes. And we're going to, me and Sean talk today, and um, we're going to try to line up a bunch of different classes all the way across. A bunch of different, like, all day, literally all day classes. And Sean mentioned, we're going to do probably do it at Schoolcraft College. Um, Sean mentioned some ridiculous price point. I can't remember what it was. Something like uh, $27, I think, literally. A $27 price point. For some of the classes we're going to do. Yeah. In 2018. Um, stacking. Okay. Major asked about stacking. Okay. Major. Are you still here? Okay. How do you light the tracks without the shadow of the train? Um, stacking. So how do you light the tracks without the shadow? Um, how do you light the tracks without the shadow? How do you light the tracks? Give me a second, you guys. How do you light the tracks without the shadows? Okay, I got you. Um, okay, so I had to be careful in answering this question because, um, you know, crazy things happen. And um, I don't want people to go out and do something and then get themselves hurt. So if you're going to do this, do it, you know, safely and do it on an, in an inactive, you know, where sometimes railroad tracks are just inactive. There's no, there's nothing there. And that might be a good way to practice, but don't try this on an active track, please. Um, the thing that I would do is I would take a light and put it right down the middle where those shadows are. And I would leave it there. And take it with the uh, light in the photo and then Photoshop it out and blend, blend it back, blend it back. So that's how I would fill that shadow. Oh, active or inactive. Yeah. So, yeah, it, and it could be a, it, it could be a tricky thing, you guys. So um, that's what I would do. So Lamar says it could be a felony. And, I, and I'm going to say especially down in the south where they have mostly active tracks the crossbar light with the no shadows just pointing it out the crossbar okay the crossbars with the light with no shadow yeah i think i i think i kind of understand major what what you're saying this is one of those kind of things like i wish i could pick up the phone <laughs> but that, that's one approach. The other thing that I would do, too many people getting killed. Yeah, I can imagine down in, in Georgia, right? Out here, not so much. You know, you have to really travel far to, to be, okay, the crossbars are lit with no shadows. The crossbar. Oh, okay. Okay. Those crossbars on the bridge. Is that what you're talking about, Major? The crossbars on the, underneath? Um... Yeah, I would definitely, those are independent exposures, and I hope I'm getting to this question. Everything I would do to fill these shadows would be on the train tracks. So if, I, if I'm getting it, 
everything that I would do to eliminate those shadows would be a light placement. See that light in the back? The, the, the thing that I don't like about this image is that light in the back is blown. And I would want to see detail back there. So that would be a separate exposure. And sometimes when you have backgrounds like that and then you have shadows, it makes the shadows look deeper than they really are. So, the, you know, that's just the, the eyes playing tricks on you. But um, I'm sure it didn't look like this. And then you also have to be careful. And it looks like he did light this. So, Major, I don't know if I answered your question. But, um, yeah, that's how, would, that's how I would approach it. All right, you guys. Major, does that, did, did I even come close to, to answering that question? Tell me yes or no. And then let's take one shot at it. Did this help you guys out by chance? You're coming to teach at Schoolcraft. You, you officially adopted the trader. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Thank you. Woo, Major, that was a tough that was a tough one to try to figure out. It, it, it's not that you asked, you know, like the super tough question. It was just trying to translate what you were saying and then adopt it to this picture. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm an adopted Detroiter, you guys. So I'll, I'll definitely be back at, we're, I think we're going to do the classes at Schoolcraft. Sean gave me a couple locations today. So we're, we're, we're trying to work out the timing and the logistics of it. But um, we're, we're going to be doing a print on site class. Um, all day, literally, just the whole process of it, how to bid the jobs. Um, in that, we'll be doing some role playing. You know, you know, I'm, I'll be the client, and I was like, okay, I got a job, and I want you to uh, bid it out. We'll, we'll do some stuff over the phone. I'm going to share with you how I actually um, track the client, um, what you need to do if you're going to run a crew, how to run that crew, how to cost that crew out. We'll talk about flashes. Now, here's the thing in my print on site and in, in my, my event photography and print on site, I don't allow my crew to use any kinds of modifiers. No modifiers. Matter of fact, um, one of my guys, he has a, uh, we don't have a date yet. We have to check with Schoolcraft and see, you know, what their availability is. So everything kind of revolves around that. But um, I have a 16 year old who her dad works on my crew and um, he, she'll work, she'll come out and, and shoot and she doesn't use modifiers at all. She's straight bare light bouncing, 16 years old. So, um, and a lot of the image, you go on to keithbdixon.com and you dig into some of the event photography stuff, some of her images are actually on there. So it's not hard to do when you have some, some instruction that works. So we're going to we're going to cover that. We're going to cover how to approach a group of people and take a picture, how to do fast photos. We're going to cover um, distance to subject when your lens quality is actually going to fall off when you're hand holding. So if you shoot, if you're shooting events and your subject is eight feet away because you're trying to fit them in and then you get the picture back and it's kind of soft, there's a reason for that. So we're going to cover all of that kind of stuff in the print on site class. We're going to do uh, probably some shoot, shoot on location stuff. And I know there's a lot of people that want to do interiors and you can see my interior work at KeithBDixon.net. I shoot interiors every week. I mean, it's, it's a grind for real. I just shot one today and, um, so if you're interested in interiors or landscapes, and the reason why I like to incorporate landscapes is because it's a big part of being a photographer and being able to negotiate light, you know, when you don't have total control over it. All right, you guys, any questions before we dive out of here? Any questions before? I hope I was helpful. Was this help for, helpful for you guys? Put in a Wi-Fi if it was helpful. You know, like, hey, Keith, this is free, full of value. Quit playing. Uh, I got to apologize for the Internet con connectivity. Looks like it's it's running on um, it's running on YouTube right now, you guys. So I got to I got to stream. My stream health is green. So it just must have been some connected connectivity stuff. Anyone have any questions? Can 
gas they offer another sure what do you guys want to talk about give me a topic let's talk about something I'll stay on as long as I can throw out a topic that you are that you strongly need help with and you need an answer on and um, I'm sitting here I have computers if I don't know the answer I'll definitely dig it up and then we can uncover it together you guys I have reached the 15 million mark for hearts it's pretty an, pretty amazing thing band with you to, yeah you know what Mike you're right because you know I'm, I was sitting here and my um, CPU went up to 60% and, and I've got a brand new MacBook Pro you know like the beastie one and uh, it started turning yellow and then there's just all kind of stuff going on I know you guys are probably thinking about questions or getting ready to type them. So um, I'm, I'm going to stall for a little bit. I'm going to stall this out. And uh, here's what here's what I'm going to do. By the way, here's the link, you guys. What is the approach you recommend if I wanted to get better at high-speed sync? Ah, I love that question. Okay. Um, I would use high speed sync with flash. That's going to give you an amazing kind of feeling in your image. So when you high, high, cause you know, we can naturally just high, high speed sync, but when you start popping flash and gels with it and oh my goodness, that's, you know, that's when you just start to step into a whole new dimension. So for you, Lamar, um, high speed sync on TTL and then use um, a second light and mix it in with ambient, gel it, and, and use on your camera, set your, uh, your white balance to like a uh, bulb and then put a tungsten gel on. And whatever your, your light is, you know, whether it's uh, tungsten or fluorescent, you just wanna use the total opposite and oh boy. Yes, you're on fire. So um, those are some of the things that I would do to experiment with it. And, and here's another thing that, that I would actually do too. If you're going to high speed sync, I would use a prime or some type of telephoto, not a wide. A prime or a telephoto, something like a 135 or 105. Um, yeah, I do, and that's why, that's why I said that. So high speed sync because what's going to happen is you're going to get those you're going to get that nice bouquet and if you if you hit your filters right you'll get nice round circles and that's that's those nice round circles they'll be colorful and they'll pop so that was when I shoot weddings and um, I've got good backlighting maybe from there they've got a string of bulbs or whatever that's what I'll do a high speed sync so I'll probably go like uh, 3228 um, Sometimes more just kind of depends, but usually around 320 with the with TTL, and um, just I'll bounce it, and I I don't really backlight too much because some photographers will get a monopod and you know kind of direct the light that way. This is when I used to shoot weddings, but um, that's how I would shoot it, and then sometimes shoot it straight at them, depending on you know how dark it was or uh, what I was doing, so. Does that help, Lamar? Or do I need to go deeper? Do I need to go deeper on that subject? All right. Hey, you guys, we still have the best resource for color correcting with gels on speed light. Best resource. Um, what's that lab? There's a lab website. Let me see. I know. Because I know you... I, Lamar's, we're going to call him Lamar the mixologist. Um, Cambridge Color um, Major. Cambridge Color. Let me see if I can pull it up. There we go. Photo Vision works really well. Yeah. No, just Cambridge Color. 
Yeah, I still got, I don't know, my internet's not working. But Cambridge Color is a good resource for understanding color and how it relates to color temperature, um, color gamut. That's a good resource. And then Mike, um, what is that other one called, Mike? Photo Vision. Photo Vision, if you're a PPA member, Photo Vision is free. So that's a that's another good resource. Go to the go to the PPA site for sure and check there first. I think I might have my nickname. The Light Tender. Oh, that's dope. Lamar the Light Tender. Yes. Yeah, PPA Photo Vision is a really good, really good site. Um, let me show you guys this. I gotta I wanna dive in here because I know some of you guys are going to um Imaging USA and I wanna talk about some of the speakers that I've I've basically frequent over the years um, so I'm gonna bring this up you guys so you can see this so if you're going to imaging USA in, in 2018 they've got a great lineup of speakers and I know some of you guys are probably saying I've never heard of a lot of these people and that's because they're pretty hardcore. They're about photography. They don't do a lot of marketing. You know, you'll see them in some PPA stuff. But these are hardcore educators, you guys. And when I say hardcore, they really take pride in what they do. Um, and I'm going to point out a couple that I know I've taken classes with. You guys, Al Alderman. So if you're trying to pass your CPP, this is the guy right here. He is the guru of the, the CPP exam. So, um, one of my favorite, like old school photographers and what, here's what I do, you guys, um, Tony Corbell, Tony Corbell is probably one of my favorite old school photographers. Now look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a disclaimer and a warning on this. When you go into their class, it, you know, don't expect to be wild with like fancy jokes and all that and, and flashing lights. These guys are, are hardcore old school photographers that just, they understand what this really means. So Tony Corbell has, if you Google him, he's got tons of videos, B and H, all kinds of stuff. This is where you learn the, the rudimentary, fundamental approach approach to lighting, like in a, in the purest form, in the purest, most simplest form. And the reason why I follow these guys is because I'm following the way that they teach as well. So um, he's one of the yeah, it's nitty gritty, nuts and bolts, and and this is what you really need. You know, all the photographers who are marketed really well and, you know, smoking guns and flashing bangs and, wow, look at a fancy light. That's good, but that's advanced stuff. And I guarantee you they probably started with a lot of these guys. Guaranteed. If you ask them, they'll tell you. Most of the time, if you ask a lot of those photographers who you study under, you're probably not even going to know the names because this is where it starts hardcore. Now, this is one of my favorites right here. Um, here's another one. Let me see here. There's Haj, you guys. Um, one of the other photographers that I like is, um, I like Jerry G. Honus, you guys. Um, grinder, like Grinder, for real. And and he can really shoot and teach. He takes really good pictures. He's really good with natural light. And uh, he just, he's really good at posing and creating intimacy in, in his photographs. So that would be a good choice. When you, when you walk in there, he's going to basically grind out some interest and deliver some, some interesting education to you. So, um, another one, Neil Freed and, um, um, and Neil and Brian really good. If you're, if you're a school photographer, if you, if you're trying to run a studio these are the guys right here they are they run a studio for real like they're this is their livelihood so definitely if you, maybe you're not going to do it on their level but just to get that information that they're going to deliver whether you're doing schools weddings whatever the case is those would be two guys and they will actually talk to you for hours you might have to say okay i gotta go so those those two and they were at the at the conference as well um Joel Grimes. Here's here's why I like Joel Grimes. Joel Grimes is uh, a studied photographer. He may not really talk about it, but if you've seen some in-depth interviews about Joel Grimes, you know, he has an art history degree from Arizona State. Like, 
the guy is is deeper than the HDR images that you really see. He, the way he conceptualizes his work, um, he was a front runner for me um, for a long time when I was basically trying to figure out where I, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. I used to follow a lot of his stuff, how he how he shot, what he did, how he positioned things, and the one thing that really attracted him to me. And I don't really shoot the type of work that he does. I don't do composites at all, but um, every every now and again in a blue moon. But the thing that attracted to me attracted me attracted me to him was his ability to see perspective. Like, okay, I'm going to photograph this athlete and I'm going to fit him into this scene. That's a unique skill set. You have to be able to see how a person is going to be positioned into a scene when you're doing a composite before you even get there. And if you don't have that part together, the composite generally doesn't work. Um, it's in January. So January 11 through the 16th. Yeah, and he's good with off-camera off flash. So definitely, um, that's that was my takeaway from him. And when I would listen to a lot of his material online, it was always, um, you know, I always keyed in on how he approached perspective and, and why he did it the way he did it. Um, who else? You guys know Monty. Monty Cohn. Uh, he's, so if you're a drone person, he's going to be there doing a pre-con class. Uh, let me see. Who else? Uh, and I'm talking about people who I've taken classes with um, or, or watched in um, on the platform at WPPI. Oh, Eric Vallon. Here's another guy right here. So um, this is another another photographer that that I've, I've followed for the years, followed for followed over the years. Eric Vallon does really good work, and um, I've never met him per se, but um, you know I've followed a lot of his stuff that he's created, and um, not only is he authored, but he's also been on Creative Live and Kelby One, so. And, and with those guys, you got to be very precise. So he's another one that um, that I that I actually let me let me take you to his website. See if I can get a click through. You mean to tell me I got internet? Can you guys believe that? So as you can see, right? You know, you you see why? Look at look at his work. Like it's telling. You see that? You see how he uses light. Everything is equalized in terms of it is connected all the way. The, the body of work is very similar all the way through. Very different in nature, but similar. Depth of field, the way it's lit, the, the texture of it, the treatment. Um, look at, uh, let me see, this is what I hate about these flash sites. Because I wanted to actually talk about something. Because this is where he's reinterpreting the rule. Look at the simplicity in his photographs, you guys. Look at the simplicity. Let me see if I can get back. Look at now. I love this. This is dope. That is a dope photo. We know it's lit. I mean, that could that could be a composite. We wouldn't even know. Would you? Wouldn't you guys agree that that's a dope photo? Seriously. Throw up a Wi-Fi if you'd be like Keith. That is a dope photo. Let's go. Put in a Wi-Fi for me. Uh huh. Yep. You know what that says to me? Yeah, it's a great photo, but that's a signature. That says, you know what? I know how to light well. I'm a pro. That's what that says to me. Look at the catch lights. Catch lights are uh, is like uh, one o'clock. That's what it says to me. Snow is very difficult to photograph in, you guys. Not because it's cold, because of you know what it does to the camera. And she also has a long bridge on her nose. Very long bridge on her nose. So he's just got the right angle for her nose. And what he did, and I could, I bet you this is almost intentional. You see that hot spot on her nose, how it's really long? Because what it does is it takes away the definition on the long bridge of her nose. 
This is how deep photography gets. Thank you for the hearts, you guys. You notice that? You notice how the, the nose, the highlight is really long? Because what he's doing, because if you, let's say you shot that in, in detail, her nose, the bridge of her nose would look actually longer. And he's probably on some type of telephoto. Yeah, that's how technical photography is. So when I'm looking at someone's work, that's, those are the things that I'm looking for the, the, in, the, in the technical aspects. Yep. And then the shadowing on the inside slims it back, right? It could have been edited that way, but he, I'm looking at the angle of light. It was shot that way. So here's a photo. I, I wanted to get to this photo. Uh, side question. Almost people still. No. Um, not a lot of pros don't use. So they'll use photo mechanics. Uh, photo mechanic um, and uh, phase what's the phase one software Mike it's, it's escaping me once again the phase one software capture one a lot of pros use capture one okay this is the downside to this this must be what kind of shot what is this okay So I wanted to show you this image of this guy sitting here with his hands front to the camera. Um, just so you guys, this right here, that is a bold shot right there. That is a very bold shot. And if you if you look at the background, look at the eye peeping off the shoulder, the hands and the guns reaching out. This guy is really, it's like love and war. He's making a statement here, right? <laughs> the thing, love and war, or women in war I don't know masculine pose and you notice how the hands are really front because when you do something like this you better be real sure because those hands are going to be prominent to the camera and he's probably using a, I would bet a telephoto because if he was using a wide you know I would be able to unless he corrected it I would see the distortion because I'm looking at the lines and I'm, I'm going to probably say he was using some type of prime or telephoto so he's back a little further but that's why I like his work so that's Eric Ballin, you guys. Workshop, seminars, gears, blog, portfolio. So he does portraits. Let's look at his portraits really quick. Look, the internet is working. Slowly, but it's working. You know, it always does this around this time, too. That's the one thing that I noticed. See how slow it's working? You guys... Yeah. That Exactly, JJ. He, he's bending the rules you know, and, and making them work, not breaking them. He's just bending them. Okay. This is going super slow. So I'm going to just dive up out of here. But those are, those are my picks. You guys, um, those are my picks for photographers. Uh, before I was on the platform, those are the people that I would go in and see. Now there's some other good ones in here, um, that I've heard about, but I've never been to their class. Uh, Melanie Anderson's actually pretty dope too. Good teacher, by the way. Melanie Anderson. Really good. And um, we'll talk to you. Lindsay Adler, um, definitely good teacher. Julia. Where, did you see Julia in there? I didn't see her. All right. How's the scope how's the scope working out? Is it working out for you guys? Is it working out? So so far, you guys, so far the the third best podcast on podcast.keithbdixon.online is you're looking at it right there. An interview with official team photographer Terrell Lloyd. Um, low hanging fruit and no excuses. I mean, those are big videos. This video is creeping up behind slowly, you guys. For sure. All right. So look here. I'm going to get up out of here, you guys. We've uh, we've definitely we've definitely put in some work tonight. I hope you guys have learned a lot about composition and how it might help you or influence what you do. There it is. Podcast.keithbdixon.online. I'm going to get up out of here. 
hey this is this looks kind of trippy right here are you guys are you guys you see this this setup right here you see what I have to go through this isn't real by the way the background here is digitally enhanced but this part is real the curtains are real you guys you can see the little stuff going on right there with the monitor so all right thank you for watching you guys i really appreciate it i'm gonna get up out of here i got a 35 minute drive and um i don't know i always say i'm gonna leave out of the office and i never do but i think i am because i have to go home and process some images tonight Thank you for tuning in. This is the Bomb Squad community. My name is Keith B. Dixon. It's official. We have done, I think we just did an hour and 15 minute scope. Hour 15 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, you guys. I appreciate you. I will catch you in the morning. Morning motivation. I'm coming in hot tomorrow, you guys. I got a hot topic I'm going to talk about tomorrow. It'll help you to you know, get your mind thinking about how you need to progress as a photographer, where you need to go. We're we going to get in real tough tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Thank you, Bomb Squad community. And if you want to find us on Facebook, remember, it's just hashtag Bomb Squad in a group search. Do a request to join. We will definitely vet out your profile to make sure that you are a good fit for the community. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, and then I'll see you during the day. And I'll see you at 7, 705 Pacific Standard Time in the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. Officially, Keith B. Dixon all day. Let's go.